Hi everyone, this is Peter here. Today we're gonna have a look at the Nisi 200mm macro focusing rail. They reached out to me via email and they asked me whether I'd be interested in doing a review and I said of course saying that I'll be as objective and unbiased as I possibly can. Let's briefly talk about my first impressions of the product. It was well packaged, pretty compact. This kit includes the 200mm version of the rail. It also came with an Akaswiss type compatible plate. It also had a nice pouch with a drawstring with a neat little Nisi logo at the bottom and a bilingual quick guide was also included. The rail, as I said before, is 200 millimeter long, but the actual adjustment range is 180 millimeter, which is ample enough for most subjects, even at lower magnification ratios. The build quality is exceptional. Both the rail itself and the 360 degree rotating clamp are made out of high quality CNC machined aluminum, which makes it corrosion and scratch resistant. The focusing rail has a double dovetail mount, which makes it very easy to place it onto an Akaswiss type compatible tripod. Here you can see how I mounted it onto my Gizzo tripod. On the bottom there is a 3 8 and a quarter inch screw hole as well. So you could attach a plate then mount it onto the tripod. But if you already have an Arca Swiss type compatible tripod I would just mount it directly onto the tripod that way which makes it much more stable as there are less potentially moving parts. The Arca Swiss type plate which is included in this kit has a nice anti-slip finish at the bottom and also comes with a rather large D-ring which makes it very easy to secure it onto the bottom of your camera. The 360 degree rotating clamp can come very handy when you want to change the direction of your camera without having to remove the plate itself. So that's a great feature in terms of flexibility. There are two control knobs on each side, one for fine adjustments and a large one that comes with a collapsible thumb screw. When you rotate this thumb screw you might introduce unwanted movement, a little bit of jiggle, so just be careful and make sure that the whole setup is extremely stable. The rail also features detachable foot nails with anti-slip finish, but I wouldn't really recommend using it as a tabletop device because it's not nearly as stable as when it's attached to a tripod, which is much more preferred and also makes your work that much easier. Here you can see that I didn't even have to remove the foot nails. I could easily mount it onto the ball head of my tripod. Both the rail and the collapsible thumb screw knob have engraved index markings and the stage travel per revolution is one millimeter but you can rotate it at even smaller increments and I didn't notice any backlash at all but we'll be able to confirm that once we've taken the test shots. This clamp also features a special lever on the side. In the unlock position you can make large adjustments very quickly and then you just switch back to the lock position and then you can do the fine adjustments once again. This is a great feature in my opinion. The rail also supports up to five kilograms, which is a decent payload. We won't be testing it with such heavy gear. I'll be using my Canon ATD with my Canon 100 millimeter macro lens and we'll have the 58 millimeter close-up lens attached. This setup is well over one kilogram. And then in our second test, I will be switching to the much lighter Laoba 25 millimeter ultra macro lens. In the first test the magnification ratio will be approximately 2 to 1 whereas with the Laowa I'll be pushing it up to 4 to 1 magnification. I won't be using the maximum magnification ratio of 5x because of diffraction. Alright I'm gonna set up now and I will walk you through some basic steps so let's get started. I've got everything ready. This is my Gizzo tripod which is extremely stable. The camera body is firmly held by the clamp. I made sure that it was positioned right in the center just for proper balance. I'm also going to be using a remote shutter release. I highly recommend you use a cable release because you don't want your setup to move at all and just to minimize vibration and any kind of motion that might occur. This also makes the stacking process that much more effective and efficient in the end. Another simple but very useful tip that I can give you is try to take more shots than necessary just to ensure that you cover all the focal planes. This will make sure that your entire subject or whatever you want to have in focus will be in focus. After I move the control knob I will also wait a couple of seconds just to minimize any kind of vibration that might occur and then I'll be taking the shots. For lighting I'll be using two of these loom cubes. I prefer a constant light source and I've also placed one of these bonnet diffusers in the front just to make sure that the lighting is as even as possible. A subject which is gonna be a little fly is already sitting on a makeshift uh, stage so everything is ready. I'm gonna briefly talk about the exposure settings now. The aperture is gonna be f4. The shutter speed that I chose is 1 25th of a second and I'll be also using a base ISO 100 for a clean noiseless image. All right let's start taking the images now.
All right, we have finished with the first part of our test. I ended up taking 119 images in total, and I'll be switching to my Laoba 25 millimeter ultra micro lens. I've got everything set up with the Laoba 25 millimeter ultra micro lens. I'll be shooting, as I said before, at 4x magnification. The shutter speed had to be reduced considerably because at this magnification ratio there isn't much light available. I set the loom cubes to higher intensity as well just to counter that. The aperture remains at f4. It's gonna give me the sharpest results with this particular lens and the ISO is at base ISO again. So let's take our first test shot. That looks good. None of the highlights are blown out. I ended up taking well over 200 shots. I'm gonna transfer all the files onto my computer, do a bit of basic editing in Lightroom, and then we're gonna start stacking in Zirin Stacker and have a look at the final stack shots. I'm in Zirin Stacker right now, and I decided to speed up this process so you can see on the right side how the depth of field gradually increases while the program blends and aligns all the individual images on the left. If you wanna know about my entire workflow in Zirin Stacker, I will leave a link in the description to a video in which I compare it to Photoshop's inbuilt stacking algorithm them. In this first shot, I easily could have taken more images or could have turned the control knob at larger increments for a deeper stack, but it still worked quite well. In this second stack, which was taken at 4x magnification, the detail was exceptional and even though the subject might have slightly moved, I only had to clean up a few duplicate hairs and the majority of my post-processing only involved the use of the healing brush and the clone tool. Here you can see how much touching up was involved in this second image. In this side-to-side -side comparison, you can see how I decided to rotate the first image for a final version. I used the high-pass filter in Photoshop to selectively sharpen certain parts and increase textural detail, just like with the second one that has tremendous amount of intricate detail, especially if I zoom in, all those tiny tufts of hair on this blowfly's cheek are easily discernible. I think the results speak for themselves. I'm really happy with the product overall. The build quality is superb and the rail is pretty well engineered. It's very easy to use and it's compatible with most setups. As I said before, I wouldn't use it as a tabletop focusing rail because of potential stability issues, but on a steady tripod, it works absolutely flawlessly. I love how easily you can mount it onto an Arcus type compatible tripod via the double dovetails and that special lever on the side of the clamp, which makes large adjustments possible is a very useful feature as well. The price tag is a bit hefty. I wish it was slightly cheaper, but then again, you get what you pay for. I think I should wrap this up now. I hope you enjoyed and you found this review useful. If you have any kind of feedback, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you're interested, you might want to check out my in-depth reviews of both the 58 and the 77 millimeter close-up lens kits from Nisi. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel and enjoy the content and see you all very soon in the next one.